There, how, how's that, everybody? Sound check, first of all, number one. This is Paul Lang speaking. How's everybody doing? By the way, it is considered uh, bad karma trading for the entire week if you don't say hello to your presenter on a Saturday morning. So I hope you all... <laughs> you should all see a slide up there. Hey, guys. And uh, you should all see... Do you see a little red dot on the slides there? A little red dot moving around because I'll be doing some animating there. Great. If you don't have slides, you recommended uh, clicking on a little blue... X on the top right and hit reload and that should get you the slides. Looks like we're doing good here. Okay, great. Make sure you're on the slideshow tab also. You didn't click away from that for some reason. Well, what a great uh, line of presentations we have here today, huh? Good way to spend a Saturday if you're interested in trading the market. Um, I imagine also it must be confusing to somebody who's newer because you're saying, wow, there's all these different things going on. There's stocks and there's Forex and there's mornings and there's afternoons. And um, and, and that's understandable and you know you have to respect that because that's actually a good thing because uh, I have always said and always respected you know there are a lot of ways to make money out there guys there, there's a lot of ways As a matter of fact in a, in a famous book um, that was put out about somebody who went out to interview 25 successful traders he found that all 25 of them had unique strategies so it's a good thing we call it making it your own at pristine and I have I think an interesting presentation here for you today yeah, try reloading if you're not seeing the slides well. Try reloading, guys. Top right hand blue X. Some discussion points for today. I, I'm going to take five or ten minutes. I don't want to set the stage for what I want to do today. I, I'm going to make the statement that's maybe the most uh, important 45 minutes that you spend if you are interested. Oh, we got a, a lot of no slides, people. Okay. Guys, let me, let me switch over to the camera. Apparently, there's too many of you without slides, so just give me one second here. Yeah, I know some of you have it. Let me, it's no big deal. Let me just switch over to the... Uh, somebody got their camera up there, guys. Morgan Warren movie might have this problem. So here we go. Okay, guys, do you, can you see this now, everybody? I, it should say some discussion points. Okay, this, this way nobody has to worry about the slide thing not working. Okay, make sure you're on the desktop sharing tab now. Don't click off that. Okay, good to go. Some discussion points, what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to talk about what really works. Uh, we're going to talk about the hang-ups some people have with technical analysis. We're going to talk about a test that's going to reveal a lot about you. That's all going to take about 10 minutes, hopefully. And then we're going to take the most important 30 minutes you'll ever spend, hopefully. And uh, we're also going to take a look at a lot of charts this last 30 minutes in what I call calibrate standards. Um, at the end of today's presentation, I have nothing uh, to sell you. I have nothing to um, ask you to do other than the fact that uh, Pristine is celebrating their 19 years in this industry. And we do have a free uh, gift for you, an online lesson by Greg Capra on mastering candlestick charts and at the end of my 45 minutes I will drop a little link in that you can get that. When you get that link you'll also be, be part of our community where you get some free information from us. Okay. Just real quickly I want to give you one slide who Pristine is. Uh, we're a worldwide leader of educating traders. Uh, founder Greg Capra, founder of the Pristine Method and six-time winner of the Expo Trading Challenges. Uh, 19 years Pristine has been out there training uh, everybody from market makers to hedge fund managers to virtually all of our competition and our, our favorite client is a new person who knows nothing about the market. They're actually our best client so don't be afraid if you're new to this. Okay? Me, just so you know who I am. Um, 13 years pristine trained trader investor. I didn't know a thing about the market before I started my endeavor which was about six months before I signed up with pristine. I knew nothing, started on my own. I actually started doing options 
And then after six months, I uh, signed up with Pristine. And for 13 years, uh, I have been trading and also have been involved with Pristine at various levels, but always running something called the Pristine Method Trading Room. I'm author of several classes that we do and enjoy very much teaching and sharing my knowledge with people. What I want to make the point is that it's been a long time I've been sitting in front of a monitor and looking at price patterns every day. And you do learn something doing that. Um, so I want to tell you about what really works. As I said, I've been sitting in the front of the market almost every minute. It's been open for almost 14 years. I have a couple of slides here with some words on them, but after that we're going to get to some charts. Uh, in order to make money, I do whatever works. Um, let me say this bluntly. I'm, I'm not maybe the smartest uh, bulb in the room, but I'm also not the dumbest bulb in the room. Yes, this is being recorded. Traders Pub will supply you with a copy of it. I'm not the dumbest bulb in the, world, in the room either. Does that make sense? And I would do whatever it takes to make money. And I've been there and done there and tried everything and been through everything. And I do what it takes. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb, but I'm, I'm not the dumbest bulb either. You know, I'm not going to sit here doing something that doesn't work. I think most of you can respect that, right? That's why I'm talking to you, because of a lot of experience. If you've not discovered this fact yet, and notice fact is in capital letters, I may be the dullest, I don't know, I may be close. <laughs> Listening to news or researching fundamental data is a waste of time. Did I say sharpest bulb? Did I really say that? Oh, yeah, oh I'm sorry, that's why you're, okay, yeah. I See, I was in between tool and bulb, sharpest tool, dullest bulb, okay. Forgive me, I'm not, I'm not the brightest bulb in the room, I'm not the dumbest bulb. <laughs> um, it's a waste of time listening to fundamental data. Uh, it's, it's very detrimental, actually. It can give you an incorrect preconceived bias and ruin your trading, but that's not a topic for today. Just, that's just a fact, you can believe it or not. Technical indicators have a very limited role. They can be used for scanning to filter out or look for certain price action, but they can never be used as a strategy or as a basis to enter a position. They simply don't work. This is a proven fact. Okay? Again, you can believe me or not believe me, but if there is something that worked, I think I'd use it. Right? Something that just guaranteed you profits. There is no such thing. If you've not discovered this yet, you will. What really works? What does work is learning to read where prices are really going. There's only one truth in the market, and that is every time a transaction occurs, it hits the tape and becomes a part of the chart. A chart cannot lie. Let me take a second to ask you guys something. How many of you um, think that the market is being propped up by uh, quantitative easing? That that's the only reason we're flying higher right now? Give me a yes or no. Absolutely. Okay. How many of you would take another step and go beyond that and say that there's actually a, a conspiracy, if you will, out there that the government is actually doing anything it takes to prop the market up, even buying it directly? How many think that that's a good possibility too? Maybe, absolutely. A lot of yeses out there. Okay. Okay. And this is probably brought about by the fact that, you know, we are in a terrible economy and terrible political situation, but yet the market has tripled over the last three to four years. You're all aware of that, right? Let me ask you the next question. The first two questions I just asked you about quantitative easing and about some kind of conspiracy, do we care? Do we care at all? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I know somebody happens to be in the room with us who proclaimed two years ago, one year ago, and even today, that we are in the biggest bear market of history. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't even comment when he types it on the screen. We're in the biggest bear market in history. Okay. Um, will we fall someday? Sure we will. We could, we could rally for another five years, though. You follow the price action of what is going on. Back to the screen. To find chart patterns, you need to learn strategies. There are certain patterns that repeat themselves over and over, and there are many price actions that are very readable, just like reading a book. When you find consistent patterns and learn to trade them, you're trading with a strategy and you have an edge. And you have an edge. Does that make sense, everybody? What really works, most don't understand what it is to have a strategy that gives you an edge. You just simply don't. It's called seat of the pants. The strategies that we use at Pristine are in precise terms that can be found in a page in a manual as part of the Pristine method. The Pristine method is a very unique, objective, precise way of reading price action in a way that gives you great odds of making money. It's all about odds, folks. There is no such thing as a guarantee. Okay? Um, trading is not gambling at all, but it does have similarities in management to playing blackjack. And it's just like saying, well, I want a blackjack strategy or I win every hand. It's not what it's about. 
It's about getting the odds in your favor, and then it's about proper, thank you, David, risk management. That's what trading is about. Just like in blackjack, if you lost a hand and then walked away and said, well, this stinks, I just can't win a hand, that's not what it's about. It's about getting odds in your favor and then knowing when to act and when to strike. That's what it's all about. But there are many who feel that technical analysis is, is, is easy because it, I mean, they feel they, that they know technical analysis, excuse me, because it's easy and it does not need to be taught. Well, maybe they're right. Let's take a look at how easy it is. Pay close attention to the upcoming slides. Most traders never even try to learn technical analysis. This is the problem with technical analysis. Most people never even try to learn it. Correct? Would you agree that most people never really try to learn? I mean, they, they give it some lip service and, and they, they pick up a book, but you know, like if you were comparing this to being a doctor and saying, what do I need to do to learn to be a doctor or a lawyer? People don't try to learn technical analysis. They don't learn it at all. And those that do think that, and those that do think that a book or a DVD or even a weekend is all that they need. Well, learning this is fairly easy, I think. I've often said it doesn't require more education than a fifth grader, but it does need to be learned. And you can't do that through a book or through a single weekend. And those that take it more seriously often get one of several hang-ups. What are the hang-ups? Well, the trader may not have learned it properly. Right? Again, this isn't that hard, but it is something you do have to devote some time to, a solid weekend and some good follow-up. They may not have learned it properly, or they may have learned it, but they just forgot. Right? You learn something and then you don't apply it properly. They may not apply it right. Or if a trade doesn't work, this is a problem for a new trader all the time. Right? I have trades that don't work sometimes. And you know what I say? Most of the time when a trade doesn't work, I say, you know what? If that comes up tomorrow, I will do that again because that trade works normally. Today was a fluke. But how about if you're a new trader? A trade doesn't work once or twice. What do you do? Right? You, you probably just give up on it, right? Because how do you know? How do you know if you did the best trade that's ever been seen, but it just didn't work? So you may quit that strategy, and you're left in this terrible quandary, right? Because you, you can't expect everything to work all the time, right? You must learn from it, but what are you going to learn? What if you walked away saying, well, that's just a bad strategy I'm doing. I don't have this down right. You may walk away from the best strategy there is because you don't know that it is, right? Did you do it wrong or is it just one of those that didn't work? You know, these are the issues. And how do you know and who tells you, right? How do you know this? If you're a student and you're all by yourself, how do you know the answer to that question? Does that make sense? How do you know the answer to that question? You don't, right? You don't. And for those who make it this far, which is a milestone. We're talking about somebody who takes it seriously, who gets an education, who follows up, and who, who starts to do well. But then they get stuck at a certain level, and that's where maybe a lot of you may be at. And again, I don't know you folks in general. I know you have a great interest in trading because you're here on a Saturday morning. But a lot of people get stuck at a certain point, right? They never advance beyond a certain level. Why do they never advance beyond a certain level? Well, Number one, they may not realize how good the method is. I'm saying the pristine method because that's the form of technical analysis that we teach, but they may not realize how good it really is. Right? They may not understand how the depth to it. They may get stuck on one concept. This is a big, big, big thing to me, is that a lot of people boil technical analysis down to one concept, and we're going to go over some of those concepts in just a minute. But I want to really set the stage here for what I think might be some great learning for some of you today. Um, to the extent that some of you need to learn. Maybe some of you could teach me something. I don't know. Um, they boil technology down to one or two items, and they look at them in a vacuum, and that doesn't work well enough. I want to give you all a little test that I, I, I hope will make you go wow. So if you wouldn't mind, take this little test with me. It's going to reveal something about you. And when I'm done, I want you to tell me how accurate this test was. I've done this a few times, and it has remarkable accuracy. I have a question for you. I'd like you to vote yes or no. You're driving down the road. This is a perfectly worded question. You're driving down the road and you run into an obstacle. Okay? Do you get through it or not? Yes or no? Give me your answer. You're driving down the road and you run into an obstacle. Do you get through it? Yes or no? What a great question. We have half yeses, half noes. Well, maybe more yeses going at the moment. This is probably a world record in terms of the answer I'm seeing. There's a depends. Yes, usually. Okay. Uh, what am I driving? There's a different answer. Depends again. Okay. You have to? You have to? <laughs> you drive your bicycle up to the edge of the Pacific Ocean and you have to get across it? 
Could be a tough one. Okay. All right, I got enough answers here. Let me go on with the next slide. Let me, let me review your answers, and I would really, really like to get your feedback on how accurate this was. Okay, you all answered one of the following. You all answered one of the following. You can stop typing. I'll give this a minute. You all answered one of the following, either yes or no. Okay, that was one possible answer, yes or no. I'm counting that as one answer. These are not the best answers because there wasn't enough information given, right? Some of you answered depends. Very good. But depends on what? So here we go. Here's the big question. And here's why I want you again to, to tell me how this worked. Some of you said it depends on what you are driving or the speed. That, that's part of what you're driving, you know, the whole vehicle you're driving. Some of you said it depends on what the obstacle is, right? These are the two logical questions you'd want to know, right? You could be driving a little tiny 64 Volkswagen Beetle into a solid steel brick reinforced wall and you're not going to get through it, right? You could be driving a Mack truck down the road into a picket fence and you're going to get through it, correct? So let's take a look at this. If you said it depends on what the obstacle is, this is typically the most common answer. And by the way, a disproportionately few of you said that, which tells me this is kind of an advanced group, which is a good thing. And don't take that wrong. It just means that typically more people are in this first category. I shouldn't say advanced. You're, you're atypical. Um, if, you if you said that the most common answer is uh, what the obstacle is, you probably like playing breakouts. You probably like 52-week highs. You fear or at least always react to resistance areas. And you probably, this is pushing it, have less patience than average. Would you say that was kind of accurate? Let me do the other one, and then you can tell me how accurate this is. If you said it depends on what you're driving, depends on what you're driving, you probably like pullback entries. You probably likely respect the power of higher time frames. You probably like gaps or wide range bars, and you probably, this is pushing it on more patience than average. Now, fairly accurate? This obviously isn't rocket science. I don't expect to be on, but was that, was that a fairly accurate concept? For those, now, most of you said yes or no, so you can't really answer this. But for those of you that, that said it depends on something, good. Okay. Think about that um, as you're constructing your trading. Right? We have to trade in a fashion that revolves around us. I want to do one more thing before we get on some charts here, and that is to say the, the real value of today. I could sit here and try and teach you a concept. I could sit here and try and give you an overview of all of technical analysis, but the truth of it is, do you really walk away with anything meaningful from that? I mean, when you attend a free event like this, do you walk away feeling empowered to trade the next day? Whether I give you an overview of everything we do or whether I try and teach you the details of one aspect, is anybody going to walk away from a free event like this and feel, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go make money on Monday? Is anybody supposed to feel like that, guys? Not, not really. <laughs> you shouldn't. Good for tidbits. I'm going to do something a little different here. Um, I'm going to give you a complete picture of what you may not know. And you may say, well, that sounds pretty stupid. But remember when we talked about learning technical analysis, a lot of people really don't know what there is that they don't know. They don't even know what they don't know, which is a real problem. I put down here Excel. Why do you have Excel down here? And that's, I'm referring to the spreadsheet. Um, a long, long time ago, this is a big thing to me a long time ago, a long, long time ago, and I was very young, um, I started using a computer and I found this thing called Excel. And to me, I absolutely loved it because I'm kind of a math guy and to say, wow, you can do all this stuff on a computer, that's amazing. And I actually went and I attended in person an Excel training class. Anybody ever attend one of those? <laughs> it's a long time ago. And I sat there and I started taking copious notes. Blah, 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 blah. Wow, you know, you hit F7 and you can do this. And you hit F8 and wow, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. And about five or ten minutes in the class, I realized something. I dropped my pencil and I said, you know what, this is stupid. It, it's not when do I hit F7. It's what can this thing do, right? What can this sheet actually do? And I sat back and I just listened. And my notes were simply... Wow, you can do calculations. Wow, you can do blah, blah, blah. And I just made like some quick little notes about what it's capable of doing because I figured I could go back and learn how to do it at some point, right? And that's what it is with technical analysis. You have to understand the tremendous power that is in the charts that most people never come close to actually recognizing. It's why some people say technical analysis doesn't work because they don't understand it. Does that make sense, everybody? With that in mind, 
throw, throw out for me some of your favorite technical terms. What do you look for? What do you look for? Technical analysis, give me your, your first keyword. Just give me your favorite thing. Pullbacks, trends, higher highs and higher lows, support and resistance. Here they come on the screen. RSI, MACD, those are technical indicators that revolve around a derivation of actual price. Elliott waves, candlesticks, divergence, candles. Great, you guys have a great list of stuff there. Here's some of it on the screen, supply and demand, retracements. I don't have all the stuff that you have. Um, again, I don't use to actually trade. I don't use any technical indicators other than a moving average. We don't use that to enter trades. We use it as a guide to trends. Uh, the, co the concept of Fibonacci is a good concept. We just reduce it down to a 40, 60 pullback. Good, okay. So you guys have a lot of stuff with that. It's great. Here's some of the stuff. Right? Here's some of the a coin flip. <laughs> I like that one. Just pull out the coin. Um, so here's all the stuff that you may look for in technical analysis. The problem is a lot of people, they zoom in on one thing and only one thing, right? Like let's take an example here. Trends, right? Let's take a look at an example here. Let's talk about support and resistance, okay? Let's, let's focus on one thing, a big one. That's a big one, right? Support and resistance, supply and demand, the same terms really, right? Okay. Yeah, there was a whole, you know in Chicago, there was a whole TV show devoted to astrology. Did you know that? Never seen that. Here, here's my thing, guys. If, if, if you can do something and prove that it works, in other words, you can set up a model and reproduce it every day and get the statistics to show that it works, then you're a successful trader. And there are many ways to do that. Okay? There are many ways to do that. I've never seen that done with astrology. But let's talk about support and resistance. Give me your knowledge of support and resistance, please, in a couple of words. Give me your knowledge of support and resistance. What do we know about support and resistance? Floor and a ceiling? Okay. Well, what would you say if you were to make up a rule that compared price to resistance? What would the rule be? Price and resistance. What would that, what would that be? Balance of supply and service. Willing to pay low volumes. Well, we have a resistance area. And if we want to be bullish, where do we want to be? You have this big resistance area in the chart. We want to be above, right? Is this a fairly accurate... Statement, I mean, it's probably the boiled down version most people use, right? Above resistance is bullish, under support is bearish. Is that a good statement, guys? Would you all agree with this pretty much? Good statement? Yeah, I think it is a good statement. I mean, that's, that's certainly is a great concept, right? Very simple, right? Boom. So let's move on to the next topic. That's, that's simple, right? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's make sure we're all in agreement about how simple that is, right? It is simple, right? But let's just make sure we all understand just how simple it is. Look like, let's look at some charts. These are charts from trades that I did recently, and I want you to, a lot of people are probably here from our, our pristine method trading room that I, I run every day, and um, there are probably some people here from that. And, you know, they'll, they'll stick up if I did say something's not true here. Um, trading or gapping over resistance is bullish, right? So, therefore, if we start right there, see that green dot, folks, on the right-hand side of the screen? That's what we're going to start talking about, right? All right? Let's say that on this particular day, this is a daily chart, and let's say on this particular day we gap to right there. What would that be? That would be what? We're going to gap well, well, well below, actually below the low of that bar even. That would be bearish, some people are saying here, bearish. And it would be bearish because why? Why would it be bearish? Just so that we're... Because we're below, well, below resistance, right? Below resistance, right, is, is what you're trying to say, correct? Yeah. So you're saying that this is resistance and we gap right into resistance, right? Okay. Well, let's see what happened today. Oh, wow. Look at that. Price is opened and it went through this just like sliced butter. Wow. Well, what happened? Is that a fluke? Or is that what was supposed to happen? This was until which on this day, a week or so ago, I traded long. Volume actually has, just for what it's worth in our method, is, it, it, volume is very important, but it really has nothing to do with this answer in this particular case, right? And the long play was underneath this pivot up here, underneath this high. So our concept there isn't seem to be working above resist. Here below resistance was bullish. 
maybe there's something else involved in this. Let's look at another chart for fun. Here's another one. Let's start on the right-hand side of the chart again. And here we're going to gap clearly above the topping tail and this pivot. Okay, based on our knowledge of support and resistance, what is this? Is this bullish or bearish? Some of you, B doesn't work, James. <laughs> you need a second letter there because, see, B kind of starts both bullish and bearish. Should be very bullish. But yet, here's what happened. Red bar, day one. Cleared resistance, but yet it fell. And you know what? This was very predictable that it fell. As a matter of fact, this is a trade we were looking at in the room that day, and it said, no, can't do this this morning. It's going to pull in first. How did we know that? Because there's more involved in technical analysis than a simple concept that above resistance is bullish and below support is bearish. Obviously, there's some truth to that. Does that make sense, guys? I'm not saying that that concept is wrong. It's a concept I live by. But do you understand that there is more involved in that? Right? There's times where clearing resistance re means nothing because there's other technical concepts involved. Right? Again, let's take a look here. Here's a question for you guys. Let's vote on this. Gapping over resistance is bullish, right? So we're going to start on the right side of the chart here. What is resistance? Is it here or here? How many of you think it's number one here? Number one or number two, the or here? Number one or number two? Look at that. Now, here's, here's an intelligent group of traders, correct? You guys are all knowledgeable traders, and you're 50-50 on the answer. How can that be, folks? This was a simple question, right? Above resistance is bullish. And you guys are split right down the middle about whether or not we need to clear number one or number two, correct? Bias is personal. That's somewhat true, Sandy, but you know, in trading, we do have to make things as objective as possible. But you're right, at some point, there's going to be some subjectivity involved. You can't avoid that. You cannot make trading 100% objective, despite what anybody may have told you. It's not possible. But we do need to make it as objective as possible. We need rules, and we need to understand what should happen most of the time, correct? The truth of it is, in this particular trade, that really um, clearing this is what's really important. There's another question on the screen. Does it matter what is there? In other words, this is the issue, right? This little tail, you see where I'm pointing? Does it matter what that is? In other words, are there different types of resistance? Guys, are there different types of resistance? Like you're driving down the road and you run into a picket fence, a red brick wall, a wood fence, a solid steel wall. Are there different types of resistance? Yeah, absolutely there are. If there are different types of resistance, does it matter how long ago it was? Does it matter if it was two bars ago or 30 bars ago or 50? And how much does that matter? Do you start to see the sliding scale that gets involved here, guys? Do you start to see the impossibility to make this completely objective? I mean, well, you can have a formula where you have a logarithm saying X number of bars back diminishes the problem. But what if way back it's really strong? What if you have a real strong resistance area way back here, but it's really strong, like a square top, triple top high? Thank you, Antonio. Does that mean it's more resistance than here? Which is the bigger resistance? Another question for you guys. A real this is the topping tail that's our resistance. If you want to be bullish, if you want to be bullish and you do have something above you, is the topping tail what you want to see, yes or no? If you want to be bullish, but the thing to your left is a topping tail, is that what you want to see, yes or no? Look at this. Once again, a room full of intelligent traders, and you're split right down the middle. The answer to this question is yes. That's exactly what I want to see. There is an answer to this. I'm saying there is something to your left. We can't help that. But I'm saying that if it's a topping tail, is that what you want to see? And the answer is yes. A topping tail is what you want to see. See, and that defies a lot of logic because of ill-properly taught concepts. A top until the time you enter it after multiple bar high may mean a short-term pullback's in place, but when you re-attack a topping tail, it actually is very weak resistance. Compare that to, in other words, 
if you were to compare this to a, a multiple bar square top or a double top big red bar, this would have very little resistance in it. Okay? Make sense? Yeah, big volume on that day, but again, you know, at Pristine we say that you can read any price pattern through price, candlesticks, and volume. Okay? You can read any price pattern. But again, volume is greatly misused. Like when you have this huge volume, what does that mean exactly? When you reattack it, is that bearish or not? It depends what kind of volume this is. In this case, it actually is a bullish thing because this is a ending volume, not a beginning volume. This is actually a puke out type of volume from the gap up in the four days up to some extent. It's not a perfect example of it. But here, the big volume topping deal actually becomes a good thing. Remember, for every price, for every little thing of volume, it's a buyer and a seller, right? So you can't just say, wow, there's a lot of selling going on here. There's also a lot of buying going on, right? Uh, if you read time side in your solar bought, um, you, you you may not know. But I mean, generally, in read time or sales, they're different colors depending upon if the bid bought the offer, if the offer sold to the bid. If the offer sold to the bid, um, then then it's a sell. But it also really doesn't matter because the point is somebody was willing to buy and somebody's willing to sell within a penny of each other, right? Could be a lot of short buying. That's true, dear, right? And if it is a lot of short buying, what happens when you cross this topping tail? you could have a huge move to the upside because now you not only have bullish people playing, but you have shorts who need to cover to just get back to zero, right? So there's a lot of things going on in a chart. I'm sorry, I, I can't get all of your questions. I'm trying to grab some here and there, but I'm simply, you know, I'm not going to have time to do all that. And I know you want to get through all the charts so we can. Um, you'll be able to email me if you want, if you have some questions. I don't mind taking some emails on this. Maybe I shouldn't say that you are a huge group here today, and I, maybe I shouldn't say that, but... <laughs> Here's another one for you guys. This is actually a slide that I have in a class that I teach called Advanced Gap Strategies. And this is just a beautiful slide. Let me, let's take another vote here, guys. This stock is going to gap up a lot. Okay? I'm not going to tell you where yet. But if you had your choice, where would you want it to gap to? Would you want it to gap to A, just over A, or just over B, or just over C? Go ahead and get yeah, just above resistance. Exactly, Herman, right? But where is resistance? Is it A, B, or C? What is your answer? Where, do you, where would you like this to get? And again, this will say a lot about you. Remember I, back to that thing about driving a car down a road? Do you want to be driving um, a, a little puny car, but you have no obstacles? Or do you want to be driving a powerful truck and have picket fences to go through? Right? Now, naturally, there's an obvious answer that says C. Why? Why C? Well, I don't need to ask you because you're clearing everything on the chart. But let me ask you guys, those people said C, let me ask you something. Is that being balanced out by the amount you gapped? Does it matter that you gapped from 1750 to 2050? Does that matter? You just gapped 20%. Does that, does that water down your concept about clearing resistance at all? In other words, if you put it in perspective, maybe there's just a little wood fence up here, but you've driven your little Volkswagen 4,000 miles, and it's running on fumes, and it's running on two cylinders, and do you need a lot of resistance once you're that tired? Hmm. Something to think about. I personally, I'll give you my answer, I personally would prefer A, because I'm the kind of guy that wants to be driving the Mack truck, and I don't care what, if I'm driving a Mack truck, I don't care what's over here. You know why? There are sellers here, absolutely, but we're going to get through them. We're going to clean. You ever, have, you ever see that happen, guys, on a chart where you have resistance and you just, like the Intel pattern I showed you, you just clean right through it because you have a powerful pattern you're driving. I like to be non-extended. I like to have the power of knowing I have all these buyers behind me. And this was a very, some of you may not understand gaps yet, but this is a very powerful pattern, a very powerful pattern. Okay. Oh yeah, guys. Thanks. Ray's reference, guys. We do a. Free, if you like what I'm talking about, we do a free four and a half hour class. It's normally five hundred dollars. We're offering to you guys for free. It's it's coming up a, a week from. It's coming up next Friday. I'll be teaching it from noon to four thirty. It's free. There's no sales. It's just nothing but good talk about stuff like this. Okay, guys. And actually, in this one, we're going to actually do some um, some great educating about risk management and about how to enter orders and some good stuff like that. So 
Uh, you can you can check that out. So, anyways, this particular one, this is actually out of um, AGS. This is a slide right from Advanced Gap Strategies. The stock in this particular happened to open all the way up at C, and it did beautifully. It did beautifully. There's no question it would do beautifully, but what is the issue sometimes, guys, if you're trading intraday or even if you're swing trading and you have a stock that gaps up, even though you know it's going to be a strong stock that day, what's the issue, everybody? What is the issue? Even if you know exactly, Herman, how do you know it's not going to pull back first? Or in other words, you get in the stock early because it starts moving up, and then boom, you get stopped out. And then you say, okay, and then I get stopped out. And then it finally goes, right? And Ken, I got to disagree with you on that. Gaps are not usually filled. That's, that's a... A statistic that is erroneously quoted. The market, true. Individual stocks, no. And not if you're talking about a short time period in which you could trade reasonably. I mean, sure, over 20 years everything fills, and that's where the statistics come from. But if you're looking at a gap, you do not use as a bias the concept that it will fill. I mean, it's just an erroneous thing for what it's worth. All right, here's another one, guys. Here's another technical concept. Trends. Trends are easy. Right? Trends are easy. Stay with the trend until it breaks. If you're long this stock at the green dot, we all agree we're in an uptrend here, correct? Intraday pattern, five-minute chart. We all agree we're in an uptrend, right? But, well, Wes, there's a specific way you would need to enter to make sure it's not going to go against you, to at least get the odds in your favor it's not going to go against you. And I'm, I'm sorry, I know you guys have tons of questions, but I have exactly nine minutes left. And I have slightly more slides than I can get through. So I do want to do my goal of, of, of you know, I, I cannot per, get to, through to you all the answers today. Because some of these answers would take two hours to do. They literally would. Um, but I want to open your eyes again to the various things that are out there and why maybe some things don't work like they're supposed to. Uh, volume dropping off. Well, again, see, Pete, actually, Pete, volume dropping off is a bullish thing. In this particular case, if you're consolidating sideways after an uptrend, low volume is actually a sign that the stock's going to continue higher at some point, right? But if, if this were the trend you're in, we all agree we're in an uptrend at that point. So let's say you wanted to exit when the trend ends, where would that be? Would it be here? Would this be the spot at which you would exit everybody? Uh, Ray, could you drop that link again? Some people are asking for it about the, the Friday, the free Friday half-day class. Would that be where the trend ends? That's where you go. What if you went below that line, though? What if you went below that red line without question? Like that. Would you be exiting because the trend ended? Or is that just simply the normal slop that's involved in patterns? Well, again, not only is this the normal slop, but I actually went long this stock at that point. This is Intel that day again. This is the day that stock had that big green bar, and this was a buyable. It, it turns out to be a shakeout. That's right. There's a lot that goes into knowing what a shakeout is. But it actually, but how many times, guys, do you get out right here? Right? How many times do you exit right there and you look around and you say, well, you know what? When I exited, it was just when I should have been getting in. And actually, the biggest, the biggest move, the biggest profitable part of this trade was entering right here. That was the entry to this trade. And again, through relying on very simple crackerjack type of technical analysis concepts, Traders often end up on the wrong side of a trade, right, everybody? And then you say, wow, this stuff doesn't work, right? Could you see that as a new trader? Most of you are beyond that. Most, 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 most of you guys are probably beyond this, but do you see how frustrated you can get? You, or maybe you shorted this. You, somebody taught you, hey, when you get under a prior pivot, you short, and man, I just took the worst trade in history. Technical analysis doesn't work. But that's because they're relying on one Forgive the term, but I like to say one Cracker Jack box concept. You know why I say Cracker Jack? Because when you get Cracker Jack at the ballpark, you open it up, and you get this little toy inside, and it's usually some little card that has some special wording on it. <laughs> and that's what I look at. It's like, learning cracker, it's like learning Cracker Jack. If you go below a prior pivot, short the stock. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of things that go into this. There are many things that are involved in every price pattern. You have to look at them all. Okay? Trends are easy again. Where is support here? This is an hourly chart, my favorite chart for intraday trading, at least in terms of set of bias and to understand where things are going. Where is support? Is this our support level right here? Well, to, the, to some people they may say it is, but again, 
when you get a, a better understanding of this chart, you have to ask, what kind of support is that? It is one of them. Yes, Marie, actually it is. Very good. What kind of support is that? Well, we, we have a, a term for it. And again, I don't want to get hung up on names because I don't care what you name something. If you're not part of Pristine, you wouldn't probably have the same name for it. It's actually not minor support. That's not true at all. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it, at Pristine, it's absolutely not minor support. It can't be minor. You can only find minor support um, when you exceed the prior high. I mean, this, is, this would be a, a form of prior pivot support. But that's not really where the true support area is in this chart. The actual support area is the minor support level. Now, which will you react to, the prior pivot or the minor support? Well, it depends on a whole lot of other things in the pattern. It depends on the higher time frame. It depends on the extension. It depends on the split of the moving averages. All these things go into play to make you say, should I try and get it to hold at this level, or should I really be looking to buy it down here? This was Netflix very recently, and this was the buy down here at minor support in an area where a lot of traders would say, oh, it just went in a downtrend, but not true. Well, Herman, I mean, there's no one bigger to me as a, proponent, as a proponent of risk management. Okay, there's no bigger proponent of risk management than me. But we do have to separate the two things. There is chart concepts. There's what a chart does, right? And then there's how we handle the pattern once we see it. So what the chart's going to do is nothing to do with risk management. I mean, maybe your trade does, but, you know, this chart going higher or lower has to do with the chart, right? One more, one more concept here, and I'm going to be a little rushed on this one here. Um, another big important concept, guys, is management, right? I was long the queues on this play um, a week ago when I did these slides for you guys. I was long the queues, and I came up two cents short of my target. What do you do about that? You come up two cents short of a target, guys, what do you do? You take it, take some off. What if you come up three cents short? What if you come up four cents short? What if, the, what if it was a 10 cent stop and four cents represents half of an R profit? Well, none of you have the right answer in this case, and there is a very, 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 very correct answer in this case. There is only one correct answer, and that is that you have to predetermine how you're going to handle these situations. How many of you have that? How many of you have it predetermined that you have wording set up? When X, Y, Z happens, I will do X, Y, Z. When A, B, C happens, I'll do X, Y, Z. When D, E, F happens, I'll do, I'll do F, K, G. You cannot do this in real time because you will always, always be saying sell, 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 sell. You can have a trailing stop, Mia, but where would it be? Would it be way back here? Or under what? Where would it be? See, in this particular case, I was long, and I, and I stayed with it. I just said... I just have to stay with it because I have no ability to raise my stop. I have no, and you just stay with it sometimes, because that's what my plan says to do. Because over a long number of trades, that is what works out for me to be the best. Oh, breakouts are easy, man! I got to do this quick, guys. Breakouts are easy. I forgot I had these slides in here. Is this a good breakout, guys? Yay yeah, or nay, rookie? Is this a good breakout? Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Well, at pristine, we, you know, the, the term breakout is just a word in the English language. We have something called a pristine breakout play, and this is not that, not even close. If you don't like that one, how about this one? Is this a good breakout now? Is this one a good breakout? I have to tell you, I think these are terrible at breakouts. As a matter of fact, I've actually coined this as the second biggest mistake traders make, period. Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Are you buying breakouts or are you buying something that you should be shorting? Let me show you something. When people see these next couple of slides, they go crazy. This is my last set of technical slides, and then I'll say goodbye. And I still have a couple of minutes left, so we're good. Are you buying or, or, or shorting? Let me, let, me, let me ask you guys something. Let me just go to a, a simple hand-drawn slide. Boom, over the prior high, breakout. Over the prior high, breakout. Over the prior high, breakout. Not, not bad plays, right? Not bad plays. You know, you have some kind of a breakout there. You're making some money. Okay. Take that same chart and just twist it a little bit. Are these still good plays? Are these still good breakouts? Look at, look at how much room you've traveled. Huh. 
Now look at look at that pattern. You see, look at this blue line and watch this. I'm going to go to the next slide and watch this very quickly. Watch this. Just change your perspective a little bit. Boom. Are we actually buying something right where we should be shorting almost? Because this is just a sideways pattern that actually just twists the boat. You see that? You see that progression, guys? There's a sideways pattern we all agree would be shorting the top, right? Price channel. But have you seen price channels just go at an angle like that, guys? Have you seen that happen? Well, just because you're at a little bit of an angle, does that mean that this suddenly is a long up here? What if you're at more of an angle? Does that make it a long? Do you see the issues that come in? There are quality breakouts that are very good plays. Some are not. Guys, I'm on my last minute. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Everything I've talked about here can be understood with the pristine method. Every question today has an answer. There are many more questions. The list never ends. Many traders have the wrong answer. Some don't even know the questions. And many times the answer is not yes or no. Like most things in life, it's a weighing of the evidence. Guys, for being here, we'd like, we'd like you all to um, please have a free sample of what we do. Uh, we do free workshops every week after the close. And I also have for you the ability to get a free I think Ray just put it out there, but there it is because I'm not sure what he's doing there. You can access and sign up. You will get free information from us and have access to a free online training course, Mastering Candlestick Charts by Greg Capra. Um, for those of you that enjoyed this, but you know, just say, hey, who's pristine? Come, come join us. Come to our free workshops. Um, come see us on Facebook. You can take a free trial of our services, the trading room that I run every day. You can come join us for a week for free. And eventually, we hope you become a student of our methods. Guys, uh, we also have, by the way, to get to know us, we have a scanner, the best scanner out there, ESP, that you can try for a week also. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my talk today. Uh, again, my email is right there, Paul at Pristine. I don't mind getting an email from you here and there. Give me a couple days to respond. And uh, again, come check us out, and I hope you enjoy what I had to give to you today, guys. Have great trading next week, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon.